Hello chemists and welcome to this episode of Bale's Chemistry. Today we're talking about why do transition metals make colours? This is 2.5 of the AQA A-level specification, transition metals. It appears on paper one of your final exams. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit the button below and let's get started. Before we look at why transition metals form coloured solutions, it will first help us to look at how a coloured filter works. Coloured filters absorb certain frequencies of light, allowing others to pass through. These remaining frequencies combine to form the colour that we see. We're now going to go on to look at how a transition metal complex goes about absorbing different frequencies of light and why they appear to be different colours. If we remember back to the first lesson on transition metals, one of the things that we said about them is that they have a partially filled or incomplete d orbital. And when a ligand coordinately bonds to a transition metal, it causes a split in this d orbital, causing two suborbitals to become higher in energy or in an excited state, and leaving three suborbitals at a lower energy or in a ground state. When light is absorbed by a complex, it gives an electron energy to move from the ground state to the excited state, moving from a suborbital with a lower energy to a suborbital with a higher energy. This energy gap between the suborbitals is linked to the frequency of light absorbed. The frequency and the wavelength of light can be calculated using this equation, and you do have to remember it, as it's not always given in the exam questions. When required, Planck's constant and the speed of light will be given. And it's also worth noting that in this equation, chemists use nu, which is the strange looking V for frequency. Those of you who study physics might be more familiar with using F as a symbol for frequency. We'll have a look at performing a calculation with this equation. Light with a wavelength of 600 nanometers is absorbed by a complex. Calculate the increase in energy in joules. Firstly, we'll convert the 600 nanometers into meters to use in our equation. We'll then write out the simple part of the equation that we want to use. Then we'll substitute in the values for Planck's constant and the speed of light and divide those over our converted wavelength. And then we'll calculate our energy change to be 3.32 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. If we take a look at another example then, where a 2.84 times 10 to the minus 19 joules energy gap, and we're asked to calculate the frequency of the visible light absorbed, the first thing we should do is write out the rearranged equation. Once we've got that, we're going to substitute in the numbers. That's the number from the question and Planck's constant. And then we're going to calculate the frequency to be 4.28 times 10 to the 14 hertz. The colour of a complex depends on the size of the energy gap between the ground state electrons and the excited state electrons. This is influenced by four things. The type of ligand, the coordination number around the metal ion, the oxidation state of the metal ion, and the type of metal ion itself. You should always be careful giving the metal ion as a reason in an exam question and it's often looking for answers about a change to the complex, not an entirely different complex with a different transition metal ion. Here are some examples of where the complexes have changed colours. With this metal ion, we've changed from copper to iron, and we can see a colour change from light blue to pale green. In this next example, we've changed the coordination number. We've gone from six water ligands around the cobalt ion to four chloride ligands. And we've seen a colour change from pink to blue. We can change the ligand, and here we've swapped the water ligands for ammonia ligands around this cobalt complex, and we can see the colour change from pink to straw coloured. And lastly, the oxidation state. Here we've changed the oxidation state from iron 2 plus to iron 3 plus, and we've seen the colour change from pale green to purple. It's worth noting in this iron 3 plus complex, it sometimes looks brown in colour. And that's it. Lots to take in from today's episode, why transition metals form colours, how to calculate the different wavelengths and frequencies, and what factors can change those colours. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and if you have some time, why not check out the Transition Metal playlist on the screen now.